Hi, my name is Joe Bita, and I want to give you a demo of how you can do rolling updates for Kubernetes. Uh, this is a little bit of a level 200 uh, talk on how Kubernetes work. It really brings together a bunch of the core concepts that I'm assuming you have some level of familiarity with already. Uh, specifically, that would be the idea of pods, which are a set of containers that work together on a single machine. Uh, how we can stamp out copies of pods uh, to do horizontal scaling using replica controllers. And then how we use labels to organize the sort of soup of pods that can be running across a cluster. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, I'm running a uh, Kubernetes cluster already. It's running on Google Compute Engine. Uh, and so you can see when I list the instances, uh, in my GCE project, I have one Kubernetes master, and then I have four minions or workers that will actually be running the containers. Um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a uh, replication controller. And, uh, and here's the command line that we're giving to kubeconfig. Uh, now, um, this is our client-side uh, configuration system. It's driving the API. Um, this particular command line is relatively simple. It's running a single uh, container per pod. Um, and so I'm saying run, run, a, run a single container with this, with this uh, Docker image. I want to bring up two of them, and I want to name that controller the thing that's going to maintain two of these things. I want to call that update demo. Um, and here you can see uh, a dump of what we actually sent up with the API. And we're saying we want two of these things. And we also have the pod template here, um, which is what we're going to stamp out every time we need to create a new pod. And uh, in addition to uh, showing you what's happening in the command line, we have a very simple uh, UI uh, that uh, is hitting the Kubernetes uh, API directly. And so here you can see we have uh, two pods up and running. Um, here we have the ID of the pod. This is a random number assigned by the replication controller as it brings these things up. Um, it's running. This one happens to be running on Kubernetes Minion 4. Um, the image here is uh, this Nautilus image. So this is a, a simple Nginx web server that's uh, serving up some static content. If I click through to that server directly, you can see there's a little JSON file here with uh, which image we're using. And then here's the labels. These are the labels that happen to be set on the, on the specific pod. And here you can see the name of this is uh, Update Demo Pod. But then we also, the replication controller will also add a label itself so that you can figure out which pods were created by which replication controller. Now, let's say that my Nautilus application is really popular. I can go through and I can scale this thing up. And so let's say that I want to go to uh, four of these things. So here we do kubeconfig uh, resize. And I want to resize the update demo replication controller. I want to set that to four. So this is a simple uh, uh, post operation in the uh, controller that uh, will update the number of replicas that I want. And, uh, and I can switch back and you can see these things are already up and running. And you can see that they're spread out across all my different minions. Uh, and so what, what the replication controller is doing essentially is it's monitoring the number of replicas uh, behind the scenes. If that's not as many as it thinks there should be, it'll go through and stamp and create more of those things for you. And so there's some interesting things here. If I set the replication count back down to three, it'll go ahead and delete one of these things. And you can see that that happened fairly quickly. But in addition, if I take one of these IDs here, and if I go behind the replication controller's back, and um, uh, and I delete one of these things, so I can delete pods. So this is actually hitting the REST API pretty directly and saying delete that pod. Um, you'll see that this pod will go ahead and disappear. Um, but then the replication controller will then notice that, hey, I only have two replicas. I really want three. And it'll turn around and repair it. So it'll go ahead and create a new uh, a new pod to actually replace the one that we actually got rid of before. So that's one level of sort of self-repair of the system. But in addition, if I actually go through um, and I SSH into that minion that directly, that worker min, uh, directly, we can go, uh, and you can see the Docker containers that we have running directly. And here's the Docker container that's running Nginx. And I can go and so, uh, and if I kill this one directly, so this is going behind the replication controller's back and whacking the, the, the container directly at the node level, 
um, what you'll see here is that it'll automatically go ahead and get restarted. And this is actually happening local to the node. So it's kind of, um, there's a certain amount of repair that can happen on a single node, but if that node itself fa fails, then the, the master system will actually go ahead and schedule a new replacement for that. Well, now let's say that my, my Nautilus application has been really, really successful. I'm doing Nautilus V2. So let's go ahead and I, I've, I've written my code. I've created a new version of my Docker container image and I've pushed that up to the Docker Hub. And now I want to go ahead and upgrade my replica controller to that new, uh, to that new uh, uh, container image that I've defined. Well, um, we can do that. So what's happening here is that the kubeconfig command at the client side, it's doing two things. The first thing it's doing is it's actually changing the template um, so that we're actually using a different, uh, a new template that points to my new image. And you can see my new image here is colon kitty. You can be v2 uh, also. Um, and, and then what it's doing is it's going through and it's killing each of the old pods on a one by one basis once every 10 seconds. It's accelerated for the demo purposes. And then it's relying on the replication controller to go ahead and repair what was there. And as it repairs it, it'll repair it with the latest and greatest new up-to-date version uh, with the new image. And so there you can see how something like the updating code, which is this is a fairly simple updater. You can imagine an updater that waits for the new version to come up, make sure that it's healthy before it actually moves on to killing the next, or it'll say, okay, I only want more than no more than three down at a time. So there's all sorts of interesting rep, uh, update strategies that you could use using these core primitives. Um, and then um, after I'm done, I can go ahead and bring everything back down. Um, and so the stop command will go ahead and set the number of replicas on my replication controller to zero. It'll wait for those things to be deleted. You can see that happens fairly fast. And then we'll go ahead and delete the replication controller itself. Um, if we didn't actually turn things down to zero before deleting the replication controller, we would leave those, those pods up and running, and they would essentially be orphaned without the replication controller. And that may be what you want. You may actually want to delete one replication controller and then create another one and attach it to the same exact uh, uh, set of pods that are always ru already running. And so the, the, the factoring between the replication and the controllers and pods is, is relatively loosely coupled, and that lets you do a lot of the interesting stuff like the update that we're doing here. So hopefully um, that's interesting and you can understand a little bit more about how, how all the different pieces of Kubernetes fit together. And uh, thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more.